Welcome to the Guy Pie Podcast, featuring Anthony, Chris, John, Sean, and Mark. This is a weekly podcast where five guys come together to make the ultimate conversational pie about the games they are currently playing. Welcome to the Guy Pie Podcast. I'm Chris. Joining me today is Sean. Did you say Sean or John? <laughs> and Mark. Howdy. And Anthony. Hello. John, can it be here today? Uh, R.I.P. I did that wrong. That's bad. I think that was like the Satanist way. Let's let's delete it. Let's start from the top. No, we're <laughs> going to keep that. <laughs> All right, Mark, you've been playing Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, and that was on PlayStation Plus this month or last month? I, uh, it was this month. Yeah, so uh, this is one of the first Lego games I've actually decided I'm seeing it all the way through, and it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of like you know, silly silly Lego ness and uh, all the things. I'm on uh, chapter four right now. I've just been going pretty much one, going all the way up to nine. Uh, yeah, it's that perfect game for ADHD brain because like you get into an area, there's 3,700 things to do. You go and do all the puzzles. Well, first you got like once you unlock one of each of the characters, then you can do all the puzzles. But uh, yeah, like you can skip like uh, through some of the episodes to get the characters that you need. And then you can start working your way through and collecting all the collectibles as you go. Uh, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far, just, uh, running around, smashing things, collecting the studs, uh, collecting the characters, playing through the story again. Obviously it's slightly different because, you know, it's Lego and cartoony, so it's not as, you know, violent in some of the scenes where like if a person gets their arms ripped off, it just like, they just blow up into pieces in the, the Lego Star Wars thing. But yeah, it's uh, been a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to probably platinum this game because it doesn't look like it's going to be extremely tedious. And uh, all the puzzles are very simple. There's one, like, I was just doing it as we were starting, and I was overthinking it so much. I, I reset the puzzle, and then I did a couple of steps. I'm like, holy shit, it's already done. I was going at it for like five minutes before we started but, uh, but yeah, it's been uh, been a very good experience. I've had fun with all the other Lego games, but uh, I think now that I'm kind of out of other things to play really right now, this is, it's easy to just sit down and uh, plow through this one. And it's been uh, been fun. Then obviously, because it's on the PS uh, membership thing right now, it's completely free. And I would highly recommend anyone who likes the Star Lego games to give it a shot. Nice. Yeah, I picked this up when it came out way back at a launch, but I yeah, I, I did what you you were doing, Mark, where like you start with like the first like the prequel trilogy. I clicked on the first episode and I don't know what ended up happening, but I just kind of like I wasn't feeling it, and then something else caught my attention, and I totally forgot about this game until it hit PlayStation Plus, like, when this just came out. But uh, That's that's how it goes, man. (laughs) I mean, like, the LEGO games are, like, really, really fun. Um, Eventually, I think I will try to go back to it, but I think I might skip maybe toward... Because if I remember correctly, it lets you choose... At the, to start one of the each trilogies, right? You don't have to go... You can start start episode one, four... And seven. Yeah, no. so yeah, seven. Yeah, so I think yeah, if I ever go back, I might just go like do four, five, six, and then if I get really hooked, like cycle through. But um uh Anthony, uh have you checked this out yet? Uh no, I'm not like a big Star Wars guy. Like I do have some some form of nostalgic link to like the original release of the uh I guess the luke skywalker set of movies um just because my dad growing up he was a huge fucking star wars nut like he was telling me dude uh some of the some of the most expensive like not like what re- like where they were only released 10 of something but like all of like the 80s toys of star wars any of the ones now that are worth like a fuckload of money he had 
And he had up until I was like probably four or five and he sold them all at a yard sale in a giant bin. Like he was telling me there's this one medical oh. droid uh, figure that is worth like hundreds of dollars, maybe even over like potentially thousands. I can't remember what he said that he had. And I'm like, that shit should be mine <laughs> just so I could have it as a, anyways, I'm, I'm getting off the rails here. So um, yeah. It would be cool to play through maybe like that set of games. And uh, if it is co-op, which a lot of the Lego games tend to be, so I'm going to assume it is. Um, yeah, it's, see, you can you can do, uh, like, if you have a second controller, another person can hop in. Okay. So, yeah, considering that, uh, at some point, especially since I have the game by default now, um, I will probably try and jump into maybe episode uh, four, five, and six with Lincoln at some point. The catch will be how soon I do it is going to be based on if <clears throat> the version they gave us, if it gives me access to like a PS4 variant of it or not. Cause if it doesn't, then I'll have to wait till I purchase another PS5 controller. But if it does give us the PS5, a PS4 version um, as well, then I could pro I could jump in anytime. And I do need a new game for him and I, cause we kind of hit a, a wall with uh, it takes two just the boss fight that, he, he doesn't have the capability to be, and I don't have the capability to control both at the same time. And I could try asking my wife, but I don't know. She's not the most in-depth gamer these days, so I don't <laughs> even know if she could do it. That's uh, but yeah, there's some interest there for sure. Um, but in general, not, not very high level. Uh, mostly just for the co-op, to play with my kid for the most part. Honestly, it's a, it'd be definitely a perfect game to play with them because, like, as I said, nothing is really like you need like top tier gaming experience to play through. Like, even if you mess up, like a a lot of the time trial stuff, I'm clearing it by like if it's fifty seconds, I'm clearing it by ten seconds easily. It's super forgiving in a lot of the uh, the things that you do. So, like, for a beginner beginner gamer, like, it's almost like one of the perfect games. I would say. Okay, nice. And he does have some interest in Legos because uh, he dabbled briefly with the Harry Potter ones that I think I got from PS Plus as well at some point. Um, but yeah, there's just some mechanics he couldn't manage himself. But I mean, if I'm there with him, I should blow through that no problem. So yeah, I'll add it to my list. And Sean, have you checked it out yet? I uh, I'll be honest. I had a very bad experience with lego games like i don't know what it was i just couldn't get into them uh it was it wasn't this one in particular it was like very early on you know how lego games used to not have dialogue it was just like they would act out the scenes in motion or whatever i forget which one i was playing maybe it was the lord of the rings one but uh yeah i just never got into it i don't really have any interest in it maybe maybe when eli's older i know ash loves like the lego harry potter stuff but just uh couldn't get into it you know i'm a hardcore gamer I only play uh, Smash Bros. Um, that's it. But uh, it looks fun. I was laughing because uh, just Jar Jar in the background. I swear, that was hilarious. I would do it if you could do like a solo Jar Jar run through all of the uh, sagas, but it's not a thing. They should do. They did a call of Cam Lord of the Rings, but he wasn't even in Episode Four. Well, I mean, like I could, I can select him right now because once you unlock the character, when you're in free roam sections, you can uh, select any character that you have unlocked, and then once you go through the free play, when you go do the missions again, then you can bring in the characters you want. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe the studio that made Gollum shouldn't shut down, and they should make a Jar Jar game. That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> like what know. we all need a Jar Jar <laughs> game. I just want to. Before we move on from this, it's just coincidentally, um, the other day, Link has been watching a lot of YouTube kids, and I'm like, I want him to watch like something better. So I was trying to figure out something, trying to transition him to some live action stuff, and I was like, what's something good? I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know what? Phantom Menace has the kid, right? And like, he's all about like the princesses and stuff, so it does have the Queen Amidala or whatever. Uh, so I threw that on, and it turned into, we had... We each had a foam sword. He was Obi Wan, and I was Qui Gon Jinn. And every time they were fighting, we had to take out the, the swords and like fight. And then it was pretty cool. It didn't last very long. It was only like 30, 40 minutes, but we got through a good chunk of the movie. Nice. 
I was hoping he'd see, uh, we get to the end so he could see Darth Maul kill me so I could be like, oh, I'm dead, <laughs> but we didn't get there. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> or your plan, your plan to commit seppuku will come, come forth eventually. Uh, Bro, just cut his hand off. Yeah. <laughs> My son. Real sword. Any final thoughts on this before we move on? Nice, nice, fun game, a fun, relaxing game to just chill out with. Yeah, I think like I read the back of a Lego box once, and you're not supposed to put them in your mouth, so no comment. <laughs> That's definitely for debate, but another time. All right. Uh, I've been playing uh, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Uh, yeah. yeah. This week, I was kind of like in a limbo of like, I don't want to start anything big because obviously this week coming up, Concord and Black Myth Wukong come out. I don't want to commit to trying to do any platinums. I kind of just want to fuck around and just m- try some stuff. As you'll see for this and my second game on the list later. Uh, But yeah, so I finally ended up deciding to check this out. I do like rhythm games, like say when it comes to like Guitar Hero and Rock Band and all that. I think it's mainly the feel of the controller that I really dig. Like even when I had the VR2, I really liked Beat Saber. I liked the motion of like playing that. This kind of a format for a rhythm game, I'm not totally like hooked in and invested in but like i love the music enough where i'm just like a couple times each day i'll just hop in and just do like a couple planets and just like mess around but it definitely isn't something i'm really addicted to like back in the day when guitar hero came out and all that like where i would spend like hours just like playing that but uh i will say it's a really cool concept like i know like this is obviously taking from those but like final fantasy is it theater rhythm rhythm? yeah so it's like obviously like taken from that concept but like just in the story mode just like seeing how far they branch into different games and how many songs they put into this is like absolutely wild uh i will say it was like a really rough start just in the aspect of like all right first game i'm excited i'll do simple and clean but like they cut that out of like the story portion and you unlock it like by progressing through the story. So it's like a bonus song instead of being like that first initial song. But yeah, overall it's a sweet game. Uh, I don't know how many hours like in a couple weeks, like I'll sunk into this. Like I said, it's more of a, I'm kind of bored. Don't want to do something serious. I'll fuck with this. Uh, Sean, I know you played this back in the day. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Whoops. Uh, yeah, I love these games, like Theater Rhythm. And uh, this game especially, like, it was very nostalgic to go through and play all the Kingdom Hearts songs and stuff like that. I like these kind of games because they have RPG elements to them where it's like, yes, you're you're playing a rhythm game. Like, you, 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 you want to hit all the notes and stuff like that. But you can also, like, switch characters. Like, there's, I don't know, I don't remember specifically in this one, but I know in, like, Theater Rhythm, like, you can level up your party and stuff like that. Um, so I, I really like the RPG elements kind of combined with the rhythm games. I think like it, where it, when it comes to rhythm games, I've always really been into them. But I like when they go a little bit deeper than the surface, where it's like it's not just you're hitting the rhythm, like trying to get a high score. It's like part of a game mechanic, and it's it's a little bit deeper, like that that um, heavy metal. I don't think it's called heavy metal, but that metal game where it's like you're metal. killing the enemies to the beat. Yeah, yeah. And so so the RPG elements in this kind of tied together and like. The theater rhythm games and this game, like, just, I mean, you know, a lot of Square games are known for, like, having just beautiful, amazing soundtracks, and they do a good job incorporating the rhythm into that. I find it difficult sometimes because they'll switch it. They'll be like, okay, this is the rhythm, and then they're like, okay, this is what's going on in the background. Now play this, and it kind of throws you off. But I've always had a lot of fun playing these games. Like, they, they just blast melody of uh, of memory. I, I think I was, like, super hyping it up when I got it. And, like, I bought it, like, like twice physically i think i gave anthony one or something like that and i i bought it digitally as well like just because i was enjoying it so much 
Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I think it'd be cool if this company that makes these games, uh, did more series, like if they did like Legend of Zelda or something like that, or if they did like all the rare games, like, I think there's a lot they could do outside of the IP that they're personally using now. I don't know if that is something they're capable of doing, like, or, or if they're like contracted by Square, I haven't delved that deep into it, but I think there's a good opportunity to do more stuff like this and to implement more interesting ideas like that. Like maybe the Zelda one doesn't have like these rpg things but maybe it, it has some of the elements of like backtracking where it's like you know you start simple and then the game gets harder because you get more like items and equipment and stuff like that like i think there's a lot of interesting things that they can do um but only time will tell i i don't know maybe i should pitch it to them maybe they're just stuck in uh the the, the final fantasy stuff uh but I would love to see more. I mean, they're de obviously dealing with the Disney IP here. I was disappointed in this game. There are a couple of like songs that I really enjoy, and and same goes with um, uh, theater rhythm, where sometimes they they I don't know what it why, um, but sometimes what they'll do is instead of having the gameplay, you know, kind of like what you see here they'll do like a music video. So there's like the video in the background and you're just kind of hitting the notes. I think they kind of lose me when they do that. Like, I wish everything was more like this because um, it just kind of feels disjointed. They do it as well in theater rhythm where it's like, I wonder if I could actually find a part because this is like all songs here. Uh... Never mind. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's just kind of annoying when they do that. But uh, all in all, like, I think it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. And uh, Theater Rhythm, I didn't platinum this one, but Theater Rhythm was, like, super fun to platinum. It was one of those games where it's, like, I platinumed it, not because I was, like, I've played enough of it. I've got all these trophies. I might as well. It was, like, I want to. It's so fun. Like, I want to just do everything. So Nice. Uh, Anthony, you tried this one out a while back, right? Yeah, yeah, like Sean said, he he gave me a copy at one point. Um <clears throat> it was very different cuz like I go back to Guitar Hero as well as kind of like my first step into rhythm games and like I played that series to like pretty high skill level. Um and then when I moved on from it, I didn't really play rhythm games much outside of that. Like I think I probably played it Tried a few different ones, like there's some piano one on my phone, just weird things like that. But this in this format, like I I knew about theater rhythm, and I even when I was on my tirade of game collecting, I picked up uh, the first and second one on DS uh, just to have because like I love Final Fantasy. So after I got all the core games, I'm like, I want all this, I want all the spinoffs. I want you know what I mean. So, uh, but I haven't actually played any of them. Um, so this was my first experience with this approach and it's definitely a bit jarring coming from guitar hero uh just because you have so much more going on visually i know guitar hero had like a the music video thing in the background but you zone in and you don't really see that when you're playing so it was a bit of an adjustment um and i think i could do like if say if i when i do finally pick up theater rhythm like the newest one i'm confident i'll get into it this one however um no shade to the series. Uh, I just haven't played it. So, like, I'm not familiar with most of the songs. Like, I know a couple of the big ones that you guys talk about I've heard. And they're great songs. But um, a big part of a rhythm game is, like, you're playing with the beat, right? And uh, I just found myself, I was playing, like, 90% off visual, 10% off, off audio. Um, and it was still fun. It's just when every song was like that for me i just it kind of got a bit boring you know because i just it was more so just like uh what's that called in games uh when you got to respond by hitting a button uh, reaction time like time e event yeah yeah uh, it just felt a game consisting purely of that with just some music playing in the background um just because i wasn't familiar with the tunes and i do one day do want to play through the kingdom hearts series but there's so many other series i want to do that and i don't know if i ever will so no shade on the game. The only reason I didn't really play through it was just because an unfamiliarity with the songs. So hopefully that's not the case. I know there's lots of Final Fantasy games I haven't played. So hopefully I don't run into the same issue with that game. But I mean, I played most of the biggest Final Fantasy games and I'm sure they're going to be pulling mostly from those. Although I'm sure they'll have all the... Final yeah. Bar literally like has every Final Fantasy series 
Like it's uh and the cool thing is like with the story mode, like which is how you unlock songs similar to this one, is you select which series you want to do. The the downside is that some series are more difficult than others, but I think right off the hop, like you could do 13, like you could do uh I think you have to unlock 10, like but it has everything. It even has like uh the the one I bought was the digital deluxe and it has like songs from like uh chrono trigger it has songs from uh the world ends with you like another uh, a bunch of other square properties one of the cool things too is like they were continuously adding things so they have stuff from uh the re uh what's the recent final fantasy 16 was that it 16 the, yeah. the, with clive yeah they just added all those songs too well not all of them but some songs from there that were really good so i think right. what you'll enjoy what i enjoyed the most was this was around the time i was playing final fantasy 14 and they yeah. have like all the best boss songs from final fantasy 14 and oh, i was like nice. really getting into it yeah i think my favorite was uh knights of the round like that like oh, oh like that oh my god <laughs> I, I have nightmares about that song because yeah, i, dude, I uh, put it on youtube great music it's killer yeah the shiva one where it's like talking about sucking or something i don't remember it says something really weird <laughs> to look up the lyrics but uh yeah, it, it's great. I don't know. I could talk at nauseum about these games. Like, I think they do them really well. I just wish they branch. Like I said, I wish they branch out to other series. But it's it's super like, uh, you know, the, the good thing about theater rhythm is it's not as like uh, jarring if you haven't played all the Final Fantasy games because you kind of can just choose unless you're going for the full platinum and you want to unlock everything. Like, you can kind of just kind of just pick and choose. And also your characters um in in theater rhythm, like you you pick your party essentially, and like you can choose from like all the final fantasy games you kind of unlock them as you go but like for example i think my end party was like i had yuna i had a character from final fantasy 14 and i had a character from final fantasy 3 so like you can kind of mix and match so it's kind of cool that way oh nice well i'll add that to my list my wish list mark i know oh. you're not a kingdom hearts guy are you like a rhythm game guy like i i don't mind the rhythm games they like be because sometimes like how busy they can get like it it is it does like kind of appease my uh sort of like attention uh span the the problem is is like especially with this game because kind of going off of what anthony said because i haven't ever really played the games and i haven't experienced these soundtracks like the gameplay would have to be solely like there for me because i'm not going to get any of that nostalgia factor from like the songs themselves which i'm sure are like great scores but like for me like it doesn't have that same impact factor like i do like uh rhythm games but for this one i probably wouldn't end up trying it just because like i have no like uh background with the the series itself but uh rhythm games themselves i do i do enjoy you've never heard a whole new world you've never heard <laughs> under the sea what are you okay, talking well, about like, you never seen the little mermaid classic, <laughs> yeah the classic i'm talking about the the series in general like i know they go through all those ips so they probably would have some of those songs but like kingdom hearts as a as a whole like i don't really have that sort of uh experience with it so like it the nostalgia factor isn't there to drag me with it sort of so to speak. yeah i'd say like that'd be a huge missed opportunity like i think of the reason i like these games so much is the nostalgia factor i think if it was just like random songs i'd never heard like like playing the twilight town thing where it's like i was like yeah you know so i totally get that no shade you know if you haven't seen disney movies just <laughs> were you in a cage i've for seen public? disney movies <laughs> <laughs> the game itself yeah. I don't know. All right. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on? Put it right down oh, the good. old gullet. Drink it up. Blend it into a smoothie. Snort it. Damn right. Just in, if, in case anyone is watching this episode and listening to this episode and hasn't watched any other episodes, that is how we I determine if games are good, whether I put them in my mouth or not. So. If you're just like, why is this guy <laughs> talking about eating games? Like, yes, I know last week I did say Switch games are actually delicious. That's why they put the disgusting deterrent on it. But that's my barometer. <laughs> I'm not weird. I mean, I am weird, but that's not why. Just because it's right here. 
Just because it's a determent doesn't mean you can't eat it. Like you just gotta power through. You know? <laughs> People don't like black licorice, but it's edible. Whoa, whoa! What? Ash doesn't like it. I love black licorice. I so hate good. black licorice. See, yeah, it's not a fan. It's it's like Probably friendships are ruined over a black. Or <laughs> what about black jelly beans? Yeah, they're, that's black licorice. Pretty sure. <laughs> I was gonna say, was that not the same? <laughs> what about the other almost exact same place? <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Jeez. Have you ever had Zambuca? Yeah. Oh yeah. So good. I tried yeah, it once I and too. I was like, hey, it, was, it was gross. Tastes like black licorice. <laughs> you know that you know what I like? Uh, while we're uh you know having a new uh licorice podcast, you know those like uh, I forget what they're called, good and plenty. Oh no, they're kind of like good and plenty, but those like you get a box of them, and it's like uh, pink po- pink dots on the top, and then it's like white, and that's like black licorice. I forget what they're called. We'll we'll find <laughs> out later. Right. Subscribe, uh, and watch to the end of it. We'll put um we'll put time marks on the YouTube uh, version of this, so you can skip to the point where I say uh, the name of those candies. I'll do it later. I'm not going to do it right now. I don't want to de- derail the the podcast. So. <laughs> Yeah, because we never derail the podcast. I've never done no. that. Oh, never. <laughs> All right, Sean. You've been playing Valheim. How's that going? I've been revisiting you. Wanna, you want to know how Valheim is going? You really want to know? I'll show you. It's not going good. I want to know. It's Can not going well. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> let's take a look at how Valheim is going. This is where I am. I've, I, if you can see, that's my. Those are my dead bodies. Let's oh, see what shit. happens here. Look at this fucking AOE. What the shit is this? That's a lot of green. What the fuck there. is this? Oh my god. Oh man. That's yeah, fucking so that's uh, super little yeah, that's, bullshit right there. That's how that's going. Yeah. Can you so, look at uh, we're Apple not, look? something yeah you, you need something so we're actually not going to talk about valheim because that's just uh that's too stressful uh and so we're going to talk about the deadly tower of monsters i don't know if you guys have ever played this game but it is incredible i've been looking for i've been kind of in this limbo as well where it's like i don't know what to play so i was like oh i'll play valheim that's a lot of fun and uh it has been the most stressful experience of my life so i needed a palate cleanser because i literally feel like playing valheim solo you have to be demented you have to be like a masochist or something so i was like i need something simple and cool and uh I've, i'm really into red letter media i've been watching like a lot of their older episodes of like best of the worst so i was like i want something like a cheesy b horror movie so i looked up a list and this was number one on the list and i was like I think i have this i think i got it for ps plus like way back in the day for ps4 and it is awesome. It's so cool. I don't know why more people don't talk about this game. Like, it's a relatively older game, but it's essentially like a cheesy B sci-fi 70s movie. Like, this dinosaur is claymation. Like, you can kind of tell by, like, how janky he looks. But it's hilarious. Like, the dialogue is hilarious. It's very much like a movie. And the idea behind the game is that the director who directed this movie in the 70s is providing DVD commentary. So throughout the whole thing, like there's just this guy like joking around in the background, like telling you like fun facts about it. Every time you die, he's like, oh, that's the wrong footage or whatever. He he talks about like, like there's one part where you're like in toxic waste and he's kind of like, oh yeah, like uh, the the sludge monsters aren't made of the same things because there was just toxic waste there. And I thought it'd be cool and give like the cast and crew superpowers and stuff, but uh, that's not what happened. They end up dying. So you can see like the monkeys, like they're just people in costumes. There's like enemies you fight later, which are just literally dogs with vacuums like t- like glued to their heads. Like <laughs> it, it is such a fun experience. Like, and it's just stupid fun. Like the gameplay is fun too. Like you get three different characters and you kind of go around. This guy's name is Dick. <laughs> Uh, and there's a joke later in the game. Whenever I play a game, I don't know if anybody else does this, but if I'm like just kind of screwing around, I like to like flick around the joystick so my character spins in circles. I always did it in Diablo, but I like to like spin them in circles rapidly. And when I did it in this game, I did it with a different character, and the director was like, 
oh, like this character spin wasn't that good. Like you should have seen Dick spin. He's like, I love to watch Dick spin. And then when you change the <laughs> and when you change the Dick, he's like, have you ever seen a Dick spin that fast? <laughs> like it is just, it's been such a great time. It's very vertical too. Like you can't really see it from the gameplay right now, but you're actually like, the reason it's called the Deadly Tower of Monsters is because you're actually climbing this tower and you can jump off the tower and like go right to the bottom. You can go to different floors and stuff. Like there's a vertical gun where you like shoot, shoot right off the edge. Like the bosses are a lot of fun. Uh, the good news too, like it's a super easy platinum because you could beat the game in two hours. Oh, actually, this is the spot with the the dogs with the vacuums on their head. He even says it. He's like, he's like, we we needed more monsters, so we just uh, we just took dogs and put vacuums on their heads. He's like, put some Christmas lights in the back. Like, uh, I'm just having a blast. Like, it's just good, stupid fun. I highly recommend it, especially like if you're looking for an easy platinum and just something to like kind of shut your brain off and have fun with like this this is the game for you uh it's it's self-referential it's good fun it's not rated well on metacritic which was i was surprised about it's rated really high on steam um but yeah have a great time have a good time it's uh i'll say like i i fell into a great depression playing uh valheim that dragon by the way that i showed in the beginning like i didn't just run into that dragon now i've been on that boss for hours i literally am safe scumming like i'm I log out and then I log back in and then I do a little bit of damage and then I die because if you're doing solo like it's just fucking impossible because every time you despawn you go back he has full health so uh, this has been a, a good uh, a good cal uh, palate cleanser for me so having a good time having a good time nice uh, Mark is this something you'd mess around with well I to to reverse a little bit I did enjoy Valheim when I played it a while ago, <laughs> and uh, that clip looks pretty intense. That it kind of makes me want to try it out again. Maybe I'll I'll end up downloading it. But this game also looks it looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's just just the silliness of everything Sean's been saying. That it, it does sound like it's just like a fun experience to go through and play. Uh, <laughs> I I do like the fact that like all the enemies are just people in costume and stuff like that. It also it kind of makes sense why it was it'd be rated really well on like Steam, but not like Metacritic, because like I could see this being something reviewers don't take seriously at all, but the community loves. But yeah, this this oh, game does look like it's pretty pretty fun to play. If you if you uh, speaking of Valheim, that clip you can't hear any audio, but in the background the music's like heavy death metal screamo. <laughs> it's like Whoa! I can see it. I can see it. That's that's a very easy comparison. <laughs> it's so good. It's not good though. Anthony, what are your thoughts on this game and Valheim? <laughs> yeah, I had fun with Valheim when I played with Sean. Uh, I definitely could see you feeling that way though sean because i remember when they added that new biome around when we were playing or just like give or take with the bugs yeah oh my god i just remember we would go there we would get on shore we would die we would go back we would die like we would like in like a, like a two-hour session we progressed like 20 feet into the mist or like <laughs> like the biome and it was i'm like sitting there like this is this is just brutal and like i'm and sean's hooking me up with all the gear and everything like i put minimal time into it um but yeah i could definitely that's kind understand. of the fuck thing too is like when you die in valheim it's not like unless you put a portal down which could could break too like you have to trek all the way back there to get your stuff back unless you're doing what i'm doing and saves coming and the oh, Ashlands yeah. is worse. It's the the so that was the Mistlands you're talking about. The Ashlands, the water surrounding the area is like hot, so it burns your ships unless you have a special ship. If you land in that water, if you swim in that water, you die immediately. There's like oh. monsters everywhere. The whole area is on fire. It burns down your structures. Like the, the monsters one shot you. Like it is so fucked. That's just crazy. Yeah. But yeah, as far as this game goes, uh, it looks like it'd be, especially considering how short you're saying it is, it, it almost feels like, uh, reminds me of back in the day when, you know, get home from school, hop on to like Congregate or Addicting Games or Newgrounds or something, and they'd have like a little, games that were a little more beefy, like arcade that you could sit yeah. down and play for a couple hours. Obviously this one, a little more better quality than what we had back then, but it's definitely something I'd consider jumping into if I was like really bored and had nothing on my to-do list as far as games go. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I tried Valheim way back at Sean's house. I I didn't really get into it. I am curious though, Sean. Have you with Game Pass? Have you tried Valheim on Xbox to see how it is? No. You know what I did play that was kind of similar. So I imagine it would be okay. Is I I played Grounded on Game Pass and it was really good um, on the Xbox. So I haven't tried Valheim just because. Uh, uh, I guess they have cloud saves. I'd have to try it out and see if I could get my save on there. The thing about Valheim is like the thought of starting a new world makes me nauseous because it's just so much work. Um, but no, I haven't tried it. It's probably good. Like the game is like, I, you know, I'm more of a mouse and keyboard when it comes to survival games, just because it's so much easier to like slot everything in your number keys. But I imagine it's pretty good. Yeah, as for this, I think they should remaster this game. But have Matt Ma- Matt Barry be the voiceover for oh, the director. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it no, just it makes fun. Horror. <laughs> but uh, uh, any final thoughts on this before we move on? I would put this not only in my mouth, but several other orifices. <laughs> Valheim, I wouldn't put it in my mouth because it would give me fiery diarrhea. <laughs> It's good. It's one of my favorite games of all time, but it would you would die immediately. All right, Anthony. Oh man, how have the wars cool. with your guilds been going? Pretty good, pretty good. It's uh, it's really like I I kind of wish I'd chose to pay attention to the story because I know you saw in our text chat the other day with me and John. I mentioned how unlike Final Fantasy fourteen, this was fully voice act, and then. John was like, oh yeah, the later expansions are in Final Fantasy XIV, but like, it's not just the story, man. Like, every NPC, even like random people you can't actually talk to, they they have audio lines that they'll just randomly say. Like, everything in this game is voice actor, which is crazy for an MMO to me. But uh, the story, like, I've, again, I haven't been paying attention, but some of the last missions I've done, like, it really feels like they've tried to make it feel like you're playing through like a single player action game when you're playing the story missions like they're solo instance i mean you can load in with a with a party if you're having trouble to beat it for example or something but you load into like a zoned off area of a map and then you have an objective to do and some of the boss fights are really cool like i said last time the the combat isn't the typical where you just tab to lock on press any of your abilities and you just auto hit them it's like you have to have positioning like you have to face them or be within range like you won't like say if if across the room there's an enemy and i do my sword swing i'm not going to click the button run and then my guy's not going to auto run over to him and then swing like i'll just swing where i'm standing which way i'm facing so it's it's it has it makes me feel a lot more like i'm playing a some sort of action game but it still has underlying MMO aspects uh, to the combat, like more typical stuff you'd see, just mixed in with this unique kind of uh, combat. And uh, I'm playing a, a Reaper right now. It's a Necromancer with his elite spec, which is kind of a subclass, so to speak, Reaper. And it's so much fun. It's uh, The abilities are awesome. Uh, my, my super, basically, is like I transform it. It's like I go, I have like this black cloud dripping off me and like this huge scythe appears in my hand and then i have like a couple abilities that i can use and then like the bar slowly drains and then once it empties i turn back to normal um and the map man the map is uh it almost feels like i'm playing like a it reminds me of rise of the ronin uh where like you have your map you have like mission icons so you go do missions you have like uh just me- discoveries kind of thing you know like uncovering the map every little piece of the map like zone you can 100 percent by finding all the hero point nodes finding all the points of interest doing all the missions so there's like a completionist aspect to that which is great because it's like i'm a sucker for those kinds of things not all the time and that's the thing it's an mmo there's so many activities to do that when i feel like just throwing on a podcast and just exploring i can go do that um and the mounts in this game are really unique there's only it's not like other MMOs. Again, they have all these unique approaches. Like, there's only like six mounts in the game, and that's it. And each one has a unique ability. Like the Raptor, 
he has like a really far horizontal lunge so you can jump like canyons and stuff like that there's like this kangaroo that you can like jump vertical like up stuff um there's this uh mana ray looking thing and you can use it on water um not just water though like you can use it on water lava there was like this electric looking like river in this one area like purple electricity everywhere and you could use it on that whereas if you walk through that you just get damaged over time um then the, the final one it's the hardest one to get and it's a dragon which that fits more of your typical mmo mounts where you just get on you just fly wherever you want to go um where the variety comes in is these mounts just have a plethora of skins you can buy and that make them look completely different so that it's it gets cool because a lot of them it's like okay final fantasy 14 flying mount there's just tons and tons of different flying mounts could be could be a wolf that flies like the behemoth that you fight in final fantasy 16 that's a mount you can get and you could just fly on him like he just flies but in this game it's like no the dragon that's the flying mount and you can just buy different skins to make him look different and there's only six mounts which i think is really cool and it makes it uh less uh more approachable i think um yeah it's just been uh really fun i've been playing through there's uh i bought the first expansion pack there the double been working through that um leveling up and stuff get out, get out of here uh yeah uh, as far as i could tell so far like this is a game i could see myself playing at least for a couple months um before i i probably start to feel the drop off of interest um there's a new expansion coming out actually like this week too so um but i'm not gonna pick that up like i'd rather go through everything prior if i make it that long but yeah it's uh I almost feel like if if you're not an MMO guy and you play a lot of like single player action games and stuff, but you had interest in trying an MMO, this is the one I would probably recommend out of like the big three, which is, you know, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy 14 and Guild Wars 2. Because it, it just shares so many things with single player games that the other two don't, while still being an MMO, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. Like, 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 it's not something that's up my alley. And like, hearing more of your input on that, I do appreciate that they've seemed to have taken a lot more focused of approach to like balancing out the co-op aspects and the single player aspects. Because like, though, like, like you said, like, if anything would get me out there is like being able to enjoy the game solo while listening to podcasts. Like, so, like, like you said. This game is like perfect for that, especially with the collectibles. Uh, Mark, would, any any thoughts on Guild Wars Two? I mean, like it does sound like an interesting game. It's just my experience of MMOs is one of the past, and uh, unless I had like a group of people playing it, I probably wouldn't uh, be too interested in getting into it. Uh, how about you, Sean? I keep doing that. I gave up on MMOs when they shut down Toontown, so. <laughs> what do you do? Toontown. I, I would like to play Guild Wars. I'm just, uh, I'm, sc- I'm always scared to play MMOs, like, because uh, it's such a addictive experience where it's like, I know if I start, I'll never stop unless it's expensive. If it When it comes to money, money first, but if it's, like, addicting, like, I just... I can't do it. I was always scared to play World of Warcraft, and then I played WoW Classic, and I'm like, it takes 10 hours to get one resource from a boar. I'm not addicted to this. So, um, But bring back Toontown. I think there is like a, a, a Toontown you can play uh, online, but uh, you know, bring it back. I did fun. see... Um, you guys might not have played it, but in the early days of the uh, Terra Online MMO, um it was like a really good action oriented mmorpg like the closest an mmo has ever had i i think to combat similar to like an action game um unfortunately it transitioned to new owners at some point that turned it into like pay to win garbage and then it shut down but apparently there's private servers I, i've been reading about so i'm considering trying that out if uh, my interest in this ever dies down I just I can't do two MMOs at the same time. I don't know if you noticed. I haven't been playing much Destiny lately because this is kind of filling a similar role, 
but I'm almost done the story I'm working on. And so I have a feeling, you know, once we kick up into act two or act three, yeah, yeah, act three of destiny, I'll probably be balancing them fairly equally. If, if again, if my interest sticks with this, cause I don't know what it is, man. I don't know if it's like, Mark, maybe, you know, like, is there a thing with ADHD where like, you're so fixated on something and then all of a sudden just at the drop of a dime, you just completely lose interest. Yeah, that's basically yeah, yeah, hyperfixation. Basically, like that's kind of why I don't tend to play MMOs because like I every MMO I've played, especially by myself, for two weeks, I'll be it's everything. That's that's what I do. And then the moment it becomes like work and something more interesting gets slightly above that, that game disappears from my mind. I'll never touch it again. Yeah. So there is a likely scenario here where within the next two weeks when act two act three starts that happens to me so we'll see but keeping my interest so far all right uh any final thoughts before we move on bring Spring back up. toontown justice for toontown it's what you're looking at on the screen right now it's just like a a mickey I mouse was. a mickey mouse uh, mmo with turn-based combat <laughs> all right so, <laughs> oh jeez. next up we have lord of the rings golem oh uh, god <laughs> every, like, who's playing that <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> i i have like had this like desire to try it like ever since like how it launched as a total shit show like the curiosity has like continued to always like gnaw at me and for context i picked this game up on sale on psn for 7.99 canadian so like eight bucks plus tax i paid way too much for this game <laughs> 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 uh i Whoa. played so there appear to be 10 chapters for the game uh i played four of them and then i was kind of like I, I can't i can't and <laughs> like um the controls are awful it is uh very focused on stealth and like like platforming um you know like when you play a platformer like when you play like assassin's creed when you're like on a ledge there's a ledge below you right you're like okay i'm just gonna like drop down you like hit circle you drop and as long as you're like falling straight down you'll catch it there is a 25% chance you catch it in this game and a 75% chance you just <laughs> miss it and die. Um to get the to get the platinum for this game, I was looking at the trophies. You have to beat the entire game without dying. That what? is an impossible plaque. I don't know. I don't know how people have fucking done that. Um but yeah, this game oh. I, I wanted to give like this game the benefit of the doubt in some ways, but my god, it is a fucking shit show. Um, yeah, uh, it, if you're like, there's no way it's as bad as people say it is. No, it's as bad as people say it is. Like, I, I spent there's one mission in the fourth chapter where I had to make a bird and like. Like, it was very, like, I, I couldn't figure out what the fuck I had to do. Like, there were, like, symbols on the walls that would be, like, a fire, like, a fan, and, like, a color. And, like, you paint the egg, you put the egg on the thing, and then you have to, like, put the amount of wood in, like, the stove to, like, get it to, like, a certain temperature. And then you have to hit this compression thing a couple times to then make the, the like, activate the fire for the bird. And then hatch the bird. <laughs> this is the shit you're doing in this game. Like uh, the first four chapters, you're just like spent and fucking in prison. Like I, I don't know. I this whole game, I'm pretty sure you'll probably be in the prison, like doing weird stuff. Uh, there is a character called the Frail Man that uh, I think like an hour after being introduced to him, I'm like, it's weird that he's just cool people calling him the frail man and as i'm thinking it the character goes oh my name's blank by the way but frail man's all right i guess and it was really weird <laughs> like <laughs> collecting your data it's listening to you 
but yeah, this um, this is a game. <laughs> uh, is it? Uh, well said. <laughs> well said. Yeah, this is this has gameplay. <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm not uh, convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced of that statement. To be quite honest. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's uh game of the year. Oh uh, yeah, game of the year. <laughs> uh, Sean, what are you? What are your thoughts on this as a game? I'll be honest. Like I've always, I, I've kind of have the same thing as you. Like that itch of like wanting to play it, like to see if it's as bad as everybody says, or if to see if like it's bad enjoyable. Because there are there, there's a line there. It's either bad. Or it's bad good like deadly premonition um so i've always wanted to play it my question what's always been kind of jarring to me is like first and foremost like why did the people who own the rights to the lord of the rings give it to this dev team like how hard is it to make a good lord of the rings game like there's so much lore and depth and like it's such a good story it's like how do you fuck that up uh i guess my next question is do people speed run this game because i think that'd be awesome I, I bet there is a speedrunning community for this game, and I hope there is, because if that's the case, I will play it, and I will become the... I'll get the fastest time on speedrunning this game. The third thought was, is there... Speaking of MMOs and stuff, is there a Lord of the Rings MMO? Or yeah. was there ever? There is, there currently, is. yeah. But I think it's still being updated. I was playing it a couple months ago. I didn't play it enough to talk about it, but uh, it's been around for, like, over 10 years, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? There's tons of content. Uh, Lord of the Rings Online. Oh, all right. Yeah. Very what? subtle. <laughs> Let's see how many hours I played of it. It's on Steam, too. It looks like the people do speedrun Gollum. It takes six hours. Oh, that's, my God. That's a speedrun? God damn. Oh, no, six minutes. <laughs> what the fuck six do you minutes? This came in six minutes. <laughs> That. Oh, this is chapter one. It's just oh, yeah, chapter yeah. one. I was going to say, what the fuck? Okay, I only played it for like 4.9 hours. Lord of the Rings. No, it's War in the North. What the fuck? Oh, you just clip through the... The speedrun is like you just can clip through the walls. Oh, that makes sense. Well, how they Hilarious. Do Six minutes. I'm shocked that your masterpiece allow you to clip through the walls like that. <laughs> for real. That's how you got to do it, then. That maybe that was the intention behind the game. They're like, "Oh, it's just a sp fun speed running game." <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I, I will say this right now: as somebody who has played that game, even going at that ladder normally feels like a challenging task. I don't oh, know how no. the fuck they caught that. I don't even know what they're doing. This looks amazing, though. I'm going to join the speedrunning community. <laughs> Mark, what are your thoughts on Lord of the Rings? Uh, I mean, have fun with it, Chris. Uh, I probably will never touch it because I have I saw some videos on it and nothing made me want to even remotely try playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they would have to put that up there. Like, even if they give it out for free, they would have to pay me to play that game. Oh, uh, Anthony, how about you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'll never. Th I do. I do want to get a sealed hard copy of it, just to have. I just don't want to pay retail for it. Like, I'd rather pay like ten bucks or less. That would, I think that'd be cool to have, you know, like 10, 15 years down the road, it'll be like, my precious, you know, like this game that nobody <laughs> owns. This is one of the worst <laughs> games you ever see. Get Andy Circus to sign it, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I will never play this game. I can proudly <laughs> say I have no final thoughts on Lord of the Rings Call. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. All right. Uh next up, um Plucky Squire will be day one on PS Plus Extra and Premium Tiers, published by Devolver Digital, launched September 17th. I'll throw this to you, Anthony. You got this game drafted. I bet you're happy with that release date. What oh yeah. Think? Yeah, I've been I've been 
frequently Googling stuff about this game, like waiting for that release date. Because it was supposed to come out last year. I had it drafted last year. It got pushed to this year. And then they just continuously like, no date, no date. It's like, oh, but it's coming. It's like, okay. People have said that <laughs> so many times. And then it doesn't. So I'm so glad. I just watched an interview with the two guys that are making the game. And it was actually a really interesting interview. Like, uh, there, it was actually like, they had a whole different game they were making. And then while they were making it, apparently a bigger company, like think, you know, a well-known studio released a game that was similar to it. Get out of here. Uh, it, he didn't disclose what game or what, whatever, but he was basically like, so we were like, oh shit. So they had to completely change course and figure out a new route. And that's where Plucky Squire came to, came around. Um, it's really interesting looking. I, I definitely think I'm going to try it. I, I mean, I owe it. I mean, unless it scores really badly, but I don't think it will. I did draft it because I think it's going to do well. Um, it looks pretty unique too. Um, hopefully it does good. And if it does good, I, I think I'll try it. If it doesn't do good, then fuck you. I'm not trying it. <laughs> no, no, fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, Plucky Squire. Oh, dude, what did we do? <laughs> you know what you did, Sean, and you're about to tell Is us. Is that like what licorice and Toontown? <laughs> Come on. Take it down, down, down. What are your thoughts okay. on this, Sean? I think this game looks amazing. I remember like first seeing the preview. I think the idea between jumping between 2D and 3D is just incredible. Like it looks like a lot of fun. It's like a storybook. Uh and I can't wait to get my hands on it. I'm glad that it's coming out soon, like, because I've been waiting. Uh and it just like it just looks beautiful. I, I like when games come out and they kind of you know, they're they're kind of genre defining in the sense that like you don't often see games like this. Devolver Digital too, like they have an amazing track record, so I've no doubt it's gonna be a really good game, a high rated game, if if not anything else. But yeah, super excited for this. Like the gameplay looks incredible. It kind of looks like a fun kind of Zelda, old school Zelda romp. Uh so really looking forward to it. And yeah, Mark, what are you feeling on this? Honestly, since it's coming out on the uh, catalog, you said you said it was coming on catalog day one, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, it it looks fun. Uh, just just like a nice uh, simple game. Well, I mean, we'll we'll see if it's simple when uh, when it comes out. But it definitely looks like something I could sink some hours into for sure. And for the price of free, I'm in. Yeah, it was like a. a... When you... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, it was like a thing of like, I saw the release date before I saw it on PlayStation Plus first. Yeah, like, well, I'm, I've got too much shit to play already, so I'll just wait. And then I saw, oh, it's free. I'm like, well, now I have to try it. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, but no, it does look really fun. And it, yeah, as Sean, like, you nailed it with like those old school Zelda vibes. Like, that's something I always loved were those like Link's Awakening and stuff like that. So I'm I'm really interested to play it and see how it feels. Um any final thoughts before we move on? When you say catalog, you mean like the premium catalog? So extra and premium. So second tier, extra third tier. Premium. Yep, yep. Third oh, okay. tier is always uh like remaster backwards compatibility stuff and game trials uh second tier and up is always like the ps4 ps5 game so like day ones will like typically always be there yeah you guys keep seeing saying free isn't that like a hundred and some odd dollars <laughs> well i already paid so if it releases <laughs> after i paid it's free Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair but enough. if so I you pay, pay, you play like a two games a year off of it. It pays for itself. I guess. Yeah. yeah depending on what you're playing. <laughs> yeah. If it's a game that you would you're normally play, play anyways. You're playing Gollum then. <laughs> uh, I, I, I I paid eight dollars for that. <laughs> 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 I'm writing them to get my money back. So <laughs> we'll yeah, see it. how that goes. All right. Um, Next up, uh, switch successor not expected before April twenty twenty five. 
Uh, developers have reported, reportedly been briefed not to expect Nintendo's next console to launch before April 2025. Uh, that's according to GameIndustry.biz head Chris String, who discussed launch plans for Switch's successor on the publication's latest podcast. Uh, also, like a bit of, I think, recent news. Uh, there's supposed to be like a 10-minute Nintendo Direct tomorrow. Um, they confirm no new game announcements and no Switch successor talk on it. I saw that on Twitter. Uh, I saw it like right before we started talking, so I didn't get any confirmation. But uh, Sean, what are your thoughts on this? I'm super hyped. Like, I, you know, take your time. I, I mean, the Switch is still a viable option for a console, so it's not like you know anyone's in a rush to get the Switch too. I think like if you're somebody who is a Nintendo fan looking for something in 4K, then you probably are a little bit more anxious to get your hands on something like this. But I think for a lot of us, this gives us time to kind of save money and stuff like that. The fact that usually, you know, uh, successors not not like normally have somewhat back backwards compatibility and when i say that I'm, I'm not talking about like obviously from gamecube to the switch like there's no backwards compatibility there but talking more so about like gamecube wii u uh or gamecube wii wii u like there is always that kind of backwards compatibility and i think they've confirmed that this has backwards compatibility with the switch like definitely looking forward to it hopefully you know when i saw the trailer for metroid prime 4 I was I was kind of thinking like there's no way they're running this on the Switch. I think like maybe and maybe this is a conspiracy theory, but I think maybe they're showing footage for the Switch too. But people need to chill with the speculation. Like it'll come when it comes. The best part for me about seeing the unveiling for the Switch is because I didn't really know anything about it, and then seeing it, I was like, this is incredible. We live in this day and age, and I'm gonna sound like an old man, where everything's leaks. It's like, just, just fuck off. Like, just let things happen. Be excited because you're experiencing something for the first time. Nintendo's not going to keep come in and talk about it just because it leaked. Like, just wait. You're, you're, you're ruining my personal enjoyment because I am terminally online. I have to be. Like, just wait. Bring back Toontown. Uh, and just wait for the Switch 2. <laughs> I will say, they said, they, did you say April 5th? It said April 5th. Or not before April 5th. Uh, town, not, bef yeah. not before April 2025. Okay, so yeah, maybe it'll come out in April on my birthday, and you guys can uh, buy it for me, please. April 1st. When's your birthday? April 4th. April 4th? Yeah. But maybe yeah, they'll launch it April 1st, but they won't, you know, they'll hype it up, and it'll be just a huge joke on everybody. <laughs> They'll, ha they'll hype it up and it's just like a peripheral that makes it's like one of those old Game Boy peripherals that was like a magnifying glass that boy. you put on your Switch. <laughs> yeah, it's, a it's, just, no, it's just a big box. You open it and there's like a light switch inside. And that's it. Yeah, like, it says two on it. <laughs> uh, Anthony, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, cool. Like, I don't know. I. I've kind of sailed on the on the Nintendo side of things the last couple of years, so I'm kind of just where Sean's saying like people should be. That's kind of where I'm at. Where like I'll get you know updates here and there, like us talking about this right now. But I don't follow much Nintendo related because uh, there's not much there for me right now. Like my two big series that I like on there, Pokemon and Zelda. They've both lost me. Like I'm not into the Breath of the Wild and its sequel, and the last few installments of Pokemon I played just wasn't it. Uh, like it, I mean, it's great, sure. Uh, I haven't. To be fair though, I haven't tried the newest Pokemon um, that released, uh, like in the main line. But um, yeah, so I'm cool with waiting. Like it, it for to be honest, like even if they were like, it's not coming until quarter first quarter 2026 um i'll feel the exact same way so this is the kingdom is a goddamn masterpiece the unless they oh it's bad <laughs> was it they, they see what will bring me back at least to dip my toes in is if they do like a remake of uh wind waker because people talk so highly of that game and i never i i skipped the gamecube i didn't have one um so I know I had friends who had them, but none of them had that game. So I am really interested to try that. I did pick up Skyward Sword as well because I missed that one, but 
that one's not as highly revered as Wind Waker, so. Wind Waker port on the Wii U is really good. I don't it's, have a uh, Wii U. Oh, well, you know, that sounds like a U problem. You know, it's I think you need Wii to go U. out right now. Yeah, a Wii U problem. <laughs> no, it's good. Like, the HD remaster on there is good. I think that's why I'm not, like, because people are always like, bring Wind Waker to the Switch. I think that's why I'm not, like, hungry for it, because I just played it on the Wii U, like, two years ago. Uh, and it, it holds up like it's like it's nice. probably like one of the best looking Zelda games. So that's the thing. All you have to do is just bring that over, like tweak the controls, but just bring that over. The blueprints there. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of dumb they haven't done that. Like ported that and the Twilight Princess. There's already HD remasters. They look amazing. Like no doubt they would run on the Switch. They run on the Wii U gamepad. Like. <laughs> Nintendo, I love you. It's I love you. Why do you do this to me? Why do you do this? <laughs> we'll get we'll get Lord of the Rings column remastered before we get. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 maybe, maybe they'll finish the game <laughs> and then release it. All right, Mark. What are your thoughts on uh, the Switch talk? Uh, like I've petered off of Nintendo quite a while ago but uh, to like touch on what sean said people do need to just let shit happen and stop trying to find out every single detail of something as it's being made because like if you find a leak of something like that might not even make it into the final product and you're either hyping up or you're like souring something before it's actually even decided and made because like you can you can say this game this game or this console or this whatever is going to have all these things but then in practice it might not actually be able to turn out uh i think one of the like there's a couple of e examples actually what john was playing last week spore like originally their ambitions for that game were like way out there like you so much more you could do in the game it still ended up being a really great game but a lot of the features didn't make it in because like it just did not mesh well so like people trying to always figure out what's going on in every single step just let the people make their stuff let them make the stuff when something is ready enough and polished enough for them to reveal it they'll let you know and then you guys can discuss that and then when it's released then you can figure the rest out. Like the developers will like, tell you to you when they're ready, and if they're not ready, don't try and force their hand to tell you an incomplete products sort of details. Yeah, think about like the shadow drop of Hi Fi Rush and how cool that was. It was like, oh, here's a game. I wasn't expecting it. It looks great. Like it just, yeah, I find like it just kind of like i don't know why people do it like it, yeah it's cool to find out information about stuff but it just everything leaks and there's lots of like speculation but i just maybe it's just because i'm older it used to just be like the first time seeing something like was enough to hype you up like it, 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 it or not hype you up like the leaks for me don't hype things up it just kind of like makes me impatient makes me kind of like have thoughts that may or may not be true about things like some of the early speculation about the switch 2 were like oh that's kind of disappointing uh like a lot of people being like oh you know developers are saying like they're developing in like 4k and stuff like that like i mean that's never really been a priority for me in nintendo games but it is cool but what you know what if it comes out it's like that's not the case like it's 1080 which is fine but it's like you 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 put these expectations on people, and then and then people will be like, "Oh, it's not what I thought it was." Whereas it could have been this cool thing. Like, imagine someone was like, "They probably was leaks for the Switch." I maybe just don't remember. But if someone was like, "Oh, there's this Nintendo console coming out, and like you could play on the go, and you could dock it, and you do all this cool stuff," like seeing that instead of like hearing about it, seeing that for the first time was like. And I, I've had a kid. It was one of the most beautiful moments of my life. It was like, <laughs> it was just so exciting. And uh, you, you don't really get that anymore. You do sometimes, but for the most part, it's, uh, you know, I don't know what this culture is in video games. I've just grown tired of the world. You know, everything about it. I, don't know. I feel you. You guys want to talk about it? or? We can. 
if you want. Well, <laughs> so this next hour-long segment of the podcast will be us talking about our feelings of the world. <laughs> Let's do the trauma dump episode now. <laughs> well, well, that would be perfect timing, considering I just played Lord of the Rings Gollum. There's a lot of trauma to come. <laughs> he's, 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 he's fresh and ready to share. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a safe space. <laughs> All right. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on? Let right. them release their shit. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm recording all that. This is the thing. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, so we know what we're doing. <laughs> All right, so next up, uh, Cult of the Lamb got a free update. Uh, the Unholy Alliance update is available now. It introduces a new playable character, the Goat. Uh, summoned by blood and born in corruption, this wicked new ally can join the Holy Lamb and Loco Co-op. Crusade through dungeons, slay heretics, build your cult, and seek new powers together. New turrets, buildings, and more await. The Lamb and the Goat can swap weapons, deal extra damage, when fighting back to back, or deal a critical hit if their attacks are in sync. Solo players get also get a new heap of weapons and abilities to play with. As well as the addition of the co-op play, Unholy Alliance expansion also adds new tarot cards, relics, uh, buildings, fleeces, follower traits, follower quests, and other secrets to discover. Uh, Sean, what are your thoughts on this? Cult of the Lamb is one of those games that like looks really cool and I've always wanted to play and I've heard good things about it and I've never played it. But uh, it's cool that they added co-op. I think like a lot of games don't benefit from co-op, but just from looking at this, like this looks like a lot of fun. Like it's kind of like uh, it kind of is giving me like a feel of like Binding of Isaac, the co-op in that. Um, but yeah, I never played it, so I don't really have an opinion on it, but it looks uh, it looks really good. Uh, Anthony, how about you? Yeah, I've I've had interest to play this for a while, just because of the whole <clears throat> like uh, village management aspect. I know it's like a rogue light or whatever, um, which generally don't interest me. But just the fact that like the whole simi aspect to uh, the village is what interests me. So maybe this is when I finally give it a try. Um, I'd have to see, like, look more in depth to what the gameplay is like to see if it's something Lincoln could manage or like say if he is playing and if you're playing in co-op if one of you die like if are they just out till you go back to town or can you revive them because if you can just revive them even if he's having some difficulty grasping it like this would be something fun that like I can play on my own and progress but then when he wants to play something that I can just keep playing and just have him drop like hop in with me be, be potential contender um up i think i'll look more into that see if it's something he could manage plus he does need at some point to learn some some more fast-paced uh action oriented stuff because i think he's ready <laughs> to, move, to move up uh mark how about you what are your thoughts on this it seems like an interesting game uh the but one thing is like you don't really see the the couch co-op stuff anymore, which I feel like needs to be brought back because that can be be a lot of fun. Bring bring back the old days, you know, screen splitting and screen spotting, and you know, the old golden eye stuff. Uh, the gameplay of this looks like just watching the videos that Sean's posting up. The gameplay looks like it's pretty fun. I could probably get into this one pretty easily. Just a nice little hack and slash sort of deal. Um, yeah, besides that, I haven't looked too much into this game, so this right here is... I, I remember seeing it, but this right here is basically just giving me my my first taste of it from anything I've seen. But yeah, it, lo it looks interesting. I think I could get into that game for sure. Yeah, I remember I bought this when we went up to Fan Expo. I'm like, oh, I'll buy this as a game on the Switch to play, like, give a shot. And I did not play it on the drive up or the drive back. And I was like too fucked up from working midnights to like play it at the hotel. <laughs> so I never played it. I still have yet to never play it. And I don't even own a Switch anymore. So, like, <laughs> you the game though? Uh, digitally, yeah. <laughs> so, 
technically i have it because hey, hey, your, yeah. your account's on my, <laughs> so there on you go switch. you don't even have to buy the game anthony or set just play it on switch Fuck yeah. <laughs> but it uh, does the combat like the the sequences of the combat and the clip that sean has up it kind of reminds me in a way of uh of the cat quest 2 game i was playing uh probably a little more difficult uh just type of game it's supposed to be but um i do rather enjoy the, that aspect i'm curious what the the gearing system is like as well so yeah i might speaking of me having no interest in the switch i think i might actually pull the dust off and give it a go since i don't have to pay for it <laughs> <laughs> at least something good will come from it <laughs> uh this price is free i will say like yeah from what i looked up online well, it's awesome they did like the local co-op thing. It does kind of suck that they didn't implement an online co-op version of it. it but it is what it is. Um, any final thoughts on this before we move on? Where? Uh, no. <laughs> all right. Next up, Dragon oh, Age: The Veil Guard gets the release date plus collector's edition. Releases October thirty first. Uh, there are two collector's editions. Uh, Rook's Coffer is the name of the high-end one. Light Up Lyrium Dagger is included. Rook's Deck. Uh, Potion Flask. Companion Lithoprint. Uh, Thetis Map and Quiver Tube. And an Enchanted Die. Uh, and then the Virantium Pack. That comes with a Steelbook a case. Uh, collector's Outer Box notebook and an icon art metal poster neither of these collector's editions include the game um (laughs) (laughs) what uh (laughs) it is something that is becoming done like uh ragnarok i think did that with its collector's edition obviously um there are like destiny you can get collector's editions without the like the code, but they still give you the chance to buy it with the, the game code. But it isn't something that is totally unheard of, unfortunately. <laughs> like, uh, I, I I don't know. Uh, it is it is a weird choice to not include the game. I always find, even as somebody who doesn't collect physical, it just it's odd to be a collector's edition of a game to not include it. Um, uh, Mark, what are your thoughts on this? I I mean, like now I I forgot the other games that did do that before but like it's not the collector's edition of the game if you don't have the game in it it's just the collectible thing like it you you can't say oh buy our collector's edition but also pay another 100 dollars for the game as well like these things are already expensive enough just throw in the freaking just throw in a digital copy or like the uh, that little like store redeem code it costs you nothing extra help make the collector's edition ten dollars more expensive to compensate you for the ink spent on writing that code in the box but like that is that is ridiculous i <laughs> i wasn't planning on getting it and i'm now really not planning on getting it because yeah, as you said, you said <laughs> that that needs to stop because that is ridiculous. Yeah, I think John said in the chat, right? He definitely wants it. I don't know if he's aware of that caveat. <laughs> oh, like uh... <laughs> that's why he he found out late. That's why he backed out of the podcast. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm done. <laughs> uh, Sean, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, the word addition it means like a form or a version of something i think that's where they slip up because they're like the collector's edition it's like if you were like oh i got you know the dark knight the director's cut collector's edition and it's like just a picture of the dvd like that's not an edition that's not like just say it's a collector's merchandise pack or like a collector's bundle or something like that the word edition doesn't just mean like separate from like it's it's an addition of that thing like it doesn't make any sense so um yeah in terms of like the game itself um <clears throat> i'm gonna say what i said last week rain looks great fire looks terrible uh <laughs> but yeah just you know it took two seconds to google the word addition 
That's just what I mean. And in some semblance, like, it makes sense in certain forms of game. Like, Destiny 2, they're not releasing a physical edition every time a DLC comes out. So that makes sense in that way. Or Baldur's Gate, when they had their collector's edition, sometimes it was like the game was digital only for the longest time. So it was kind of like an additive to that. But uh, if anybody is listening, if any, you know, uh, game publishers are listening, it's not an addition. That's not what that word means. So, I mean, not to play devil's advocate, but these additions are just the forms of the game that don't have the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the addition of not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, my brain hurts. This is a time <laughs> problem. <laughs> Uh, Anthony, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I could. There's two reasons I could think of why they're doing that, and why we might, have, why we have seen that before, and how we might, or why we might see that coming for going forward is a more more see it more frequently going forward is that they're just they're spending too much money, or like they're getting too elaborate with them that the costs of them are getting so high that. The price just looks more enticing if you remove the hundred dollar game part of it. So now it's like, oh, it's two hundred fifty dollars. When in reality, no, it's three hundred fifty dollars because then you still have to buy the game. And then the other, uh, which is, it's, they're just getting too expensive nowadays. Like think back, you know, ten years ago, even with inflation, like they, I just feel like collector's editions didn't cost as much. Maybe they weren't as crazy elaborate or detailed statues, I guess. But I don't know. Uh, the other aspect is there are people that like to keep them sealed so i could see that as an attraction however when you're keeping them sealed you're probably partially the reason is because of value but we all know that the majority of collector's editions only go down in value from when you buy them there are some that don't that go up right like that does exist so maybe they're gambling on if that's going to be one of them but uh yeah it's it's just Stupid that it's going that way, but I could kind of understand the approach. And like you said, Greg, at least at least with Destiny, the other options exist that you know PlayStation's included, Xboxes included, so on and so forth. Um, I will say that I saw a recent preview or some newer stuff for the game. I think it was just a cinematic, but it kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Like it, I, I was like down here, now I'm now I'm like here. Because like the theming of it seemed much darker, like the, the this the 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 way they set up the this trailer or cinematic that that I saw, it gave, it spoke more to me as like a Dragon Age game, um, not necessarily again the visuals and the art style still don't quite, but like just the vibe of this cinematic I saw recently, like a couple of days ago, fit the bill a lot better than what we've seen so far. Still going to wait for reviews, uh, and even if I have interest, I'm going to wait for a sale. But who knows? There might be a chance we we get something uh, good for the series here. But I still not sure on that. Oh, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I got, like to its credit, the things that are included, I like the designs of, and I think it is a really cool concept for a collector's edition but yeah i got no interest in getting it myself um yeah uh any final thoughts on this before we move on but you're damn gaming things, in your edition that but were one of the things included did you say a fetus yeah. i heard fetus they're putting a fetus in there don't do that they're better <laughs> the, the, the fetus map. <laughs> oh, it's like, what? Why are they including a fetus? Is this Death Stranding? What is going on? And you can put you could put the fetus in a quiver tube. You know, <laughs> cool. All right. I'm buying it now. All right. Final topic of the show. So I put together a little trivia game for you boys. Ten questions. All uh, multiple choice. There will be four possible answers. You boys will each you get to pick them. So what I'm going to do, uh, looking at the layout, it goes Sean, Anthony, and Mark. So I'm just going to do in that order. You all get a chance to like pick an answer for each question. So like I'll go through each of you. You'll say your choice, and then I'll reveal who got which. So 
First up, what was Bungie's last Halo game? A, Halo 3. B, Halo ODST. C, Halo 4. Or D, Halo Reach. Can you say that again? You cut out. What was Bungie's what? Oh, what was Bungie's last Halo game? Oh, uh, okay. So, Sean, you'll go first. Uh, I don't remember which came first, but I think it was... It's either Reach or ODST. I think it was ODST. I'm going to say ODST. Uh, Anthony, you're up next. I'm going to say Reach. And finally, Mark. First thing that came to my mind was also ODST, so I'm going to go with ODST. Okay. <laughs> All right. Chris, what do you... <laughs> what's your guess <laughs> yeah. so the answer for what was Bungie's last Halo game was D Halo Reach oh. <laughs> I don't, they like consulted with like 343 didn't they like they worked with them on it so no? oh, so Four? they made Halo Reach the game that came after from 343 was they... Halo 4 so Halo like, 4 yeah, three, okay. yeah 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 so alright next up all right, which actor or actress did not have a role in the Kingdom Hearts franchise? A, Mandy Moore. B, TJ Miller. C, Tim Allen. Or D, Christopher Lee. So, Sean? Did, did not? Yeah, did not have a role. Yeah, it's Tim Allen. Okay, so you're saying C? All right. Mark, what is your pick? I'm just going to say A, so I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony, what is your pick? So, I mean, I can just pick if you want, but um, I don't know who some of these people even are. Like, I'm not really good with names of actors. Like, obviously, I know who Tim Allen is. Christopher Lee, I think I know who that is. Yeah, he would do Saruman. Oh, so, okay, yeah. Um, Mandy Moore, I don't know who that is. And what was the other one? T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller was Weasel in Deadpool one and Deadpool? two. Okay, yeah. so that is, okay. So Mandy Moore was, was like, she's still acting, but like late nineties, early two thousand, she's in like romantic stuff, like A Walk to Remember, um, Saved. Uh, yeah, she, uh, but yeah, I okay. try to go for some like recognizable names. I had a feeling right. they wouldn't all be recognizable. <laughs> I'm going to go with... I don't know. Sean said Tim Allen pretty confidently. Could be wrong, though. I'm just a confident guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Christopher Lee seems pretty random, so I feel like he probably is like a sneaky one. Like he's in there. So it's a sneaky dooku. You know. Sneaky dooku. Sneaky I'll go dooku. with Andy Moore or Mandy Moore. Yeah. Wait, what's right. her name? Mandy? Yeah, Mandy yeah. Moore. All right. So the correct answer is C, Tim Allen. So, well, this is a trick question. Yeah. While Buzz was in Kingdom Hearts 3, another voice actor played the role. Uh, Mandy Moore voiced Aerith in the Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. TJ Miller voice fred uh, rep uh playing his role from um big hero six yeah mm -hmm. and then uh christopher lee played diz in kingdom hearts 2 they have like a really stacked voice acting cast so it was just like i i put christopher lee specifically in there because he was he's definitely one of the names where you're like Dude. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was like. I feel like he's a trick one. You're trying to trick me here. A moment he said, I'm like, that makes sense. I thought the trick was uh, Tim Allen because, because uh, you know, there's Buzz and Woody are in Toy Story uh, or uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, but both actors are not portrayed. Like Tom Hanks' brother does all of his voices, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. in all the video games. But I remember like playing Kingdom Hearts 3 and I was like, that sounds like Tim. A like I was like, did Tim Allen do that? Like, what is he doing? Why is he here? It doesn't seem like something Tim Allen. So I, I, Goog I googled it. So uh, that's why I was so confident about Tim Allen because I actually like, 
had Googled it. It piqued my <laughs> curiosity. So, all right. So current score, uh, Sean and Anthony both have one point. Mark, you're at zero. You, you, there's still eight questions. You can come back. <laughs> you can come back from this. All right. Question number three. In Fallout 3, which vault did you grow up in? So, A, Vault 101, B, Vault 33, C, Vault 111, or D, Vault 21. So, Sean, what are you going to go with? Uh, I think it's 101 or 33. I'm going to go, I'm just going to go with my gut. My gut said 33. I'm probably wrong, though, but I think 33. Yeah. All right, Anthony, what are you picking? 101. And then Mark, what are you picking? Let's go 101 as well, because literally before you even started saying the numbers, I thought 101. Yeah. All right, so the correct answer is Vault 101. Uh, yeah. vault, <laughs> vault 33 was from the Fallout TV series. That's the vault uh, she was in. Okay. Uh, vault 111 was the starting vault from Fallout 4. And then Vault 21 was a random vault from New Vegas. To be fair, really? Fallout 3, I think that's the only Fallout game I really played. <laughs> that's why it was <laughs> absolute op <laughs> opposite. I've never played Fallout 3. I've played it. <laughs> New Vegas and four, but yeah, I never played. I really gotta play Vegas. Who do who did New Vegas? There we go. Nude Vegas. <laughs> Nude. That, that sounds pretty good. Hey, there's a mod for that, probably. <laughs> hey, maybe. All right. Next up, in which game did Yuri Lowenthal not voice Spider Man? So, for context, uh, Yuri is the current voice actor for the Insomniac Spider Man games. So, like Spider Man One, Two, and Miles Morales. But he has branched out into other games to play the character. Is it A, Marvel Rivals, B, Marvel Midnight Suns, C, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, or D, Marvel's Avengers? So keep in mind, which one of these games did he not voice Spider-Man in? So Sean, what are you picking? What were the options again? Sorry. Oh, no worries. So A, Marvel Rivals, B, Marvel Midnight Suns, C, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, and D, Marvel's Avengers. And I guess, uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to guess Marvel Avengers. So, Anthony, what are you picking? Okay, so just with our recent bet with Rivals, every time he yelled his call out when he do his super thinking back that sounds a lot like sasuke i think so i think he is doing rivals sasuke. Sasuke. i'm gonna say that switch game uh the third third game oh ultimate oh, alliance three. yeah that's i'm gonna say that one all right and mark what is your pick i'm gonna say marvel's b Midnight Suns? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the correct answer is D, Marvel's Avengers. So uh, obviously Spidey was added later on as a DLC character. And the name of the voice actor was Sean Chiplock. It was me. That's my that's my real name. That's hard to know. It's a stage name. <laughs> All right. Current scores. Anthony 2, Sean 2, Mark 1. All right, all right. Which was not a Destiny 1 DLC? Is it A, The Dark Below, B, Prison of Elders, C, House of Wolves, or D, Rise of Iron? Sean. Uh, I don't know. I, isn't The Darkness Below an Outcast album? Oh, no, that's The Love Below. I'm going to go with... Ah, I wish I would have played more of this new one. I'm going to go with A. Okay, so Sean is going wish... A. Or are you, are you... Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, Anthony, what are you picking? A. Okay. And then Mark. A is the only one I've never heard, so I'm going to go A. All right, so the correct answer <laughs> is B, Prison of Elders. 
So uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Dark Below well, <laughs> Dark Below was uh what uh the DLC that introduced Crota's end. Um House of Wolves was the DLC that introduced the game mode Prison of Elders. So <laughs> <laughs> you sneaky guy. <laughs> All right. Outside of the context of Destiny, like sounds like just a prison full of old people. <laughs> it's just like, eh, just we put all the old people there. <laughs> That's why it was my favorite yeah, game mode. <laughs> all right. Which band did not have a rock band expansion release as a physical game? Is it C? A? <laughs> Are you going to go with C? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find out. <laughs> all right is it a the beatles b green day c aerosmith or d acdc sean i'm gonna go with b can you say yeah, that one more time cool. yep no problem uh, do you want the question to you or just the the game just the answers yeah uh so is it a the beatles b green day c aerosmith or d acdc Hey, and then are, are you are you doubling down? I'm, or? I'm walking in, I'm walking in. <laughs> the answer is C. <laughs> Aerosmith. <laughs> as soon as you said it, I was just like, I was just like, if he, I, if I he, knew it, I knew it. So Aerosmith had a Guitar Hero game. Uh, yeah, yeah. Aerosmith had a Guitar Hero game where the Beatles, Green Day, and ACDC had like the discs come out with like the songs and shit for rock band i can't I just, <laughs> yeah i just i just felt in my soul c was going to be it that that's, oh, that's what it's going to be <laughs> oh my god i'll update the score real quick Please. all right so two's across the board right now deuce all right so next up what did the original ps vita model not have is it A, one gigabyte of internal storage memory, B, an OLED screen, C, 3G mobile data support, or D, a microphone? Sean. Oh, I have no idea. The only time I've ever held a PS Vita was uh, taking a picture at Anthony's house. Um I don't know. I'm going to say a microphone. I don't know why. I can't say a microphone. So, Anthony, what is your pick? Thank you. I'm going to say... So Anthony is A, and then Mark, what is your pick? But I, I, no, no, I didn't, I didn't answer. Didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought. You, oh, I thought you said say a. So I was just like, all right. Well, he's just right. Canadian. <laughs> just yeah, Canadian yeah. A. Mm, that's a tough one. Yeah, I'm gonna go a. And Mark, what are you picking? I'm gonna say whatever letter of the OLED screen was. So that would be B. Okay, so the correct answer is one gigabyte of internal storage memory. So A, that was included in the revised model, the second one that came out, which removed the OLED screen. I haven't tried. I were talking about the second <laughs> one that came out. <laughs> I I try yeah I try to do some really like tricky shit to like fuck with you guys with like the questions and shit. All right, next up. Which is not a Tom Clancy game? Is it A, Endor, B, Hawks, C, Elite Squad, or D, Locked On? Sean. <laughs> never heard never of heard any, any of those never fucking games. It's like, oh, what? I was like, oh, I know these games. <laughs> not a single fucking title. <laughs> I was waiting for like Splinter Cell. <laughs> ah, <fucking laughs> They all sound stupid. Uh, I'm gonna go, uh, but I think Hawks is maybe too stupid. That's what I was thinking uh, too. I'm gonna go with Elite Squad. <laughs> okay, so Sean is going with with C. <laughs> all right, Anthony, what is your pick? 
I'm gonna go Hawks. Anthony's going with B Hawks. <laughs> yeah, Mark. I have to say Hawks as well. <laughs> yeah. So the correct answer is D locked on. Oh, okay. Well, fuck. <laughs> Hawks had a sequel. <laughs> Hawks had a sequel, and that was a 360 game. I've never uh, even heard of it. Why would I know that a sequel? I just know. I just found it so funny that like I like I remembered End War and Hawks enough where I was like I could turn that into a topic or like into a question that would fuck with them because like. I only remember them from seeing them all the time at Rogers' video. Like that's the only like I would always like uh, that, that's that was it. And then Elite Squad was like it was either like a mobile game or like a PC game that is not. What are you doing, Tom Clancy? <laughs> naming things Hawks. Come on. So uh, Locked On was a Jack Ryan book. It was not a game. So a little twist. Uh, there. Okay. All right. Next up. Which of the following is not a Final Fantasy XIV expansion? Is it A, A Realm Reborn, B, Heaven Sword, C, Shadowbringers, or D, Stormblood? Sean. C. Uh, Anthony? I wish Anthony was going first. <laughs> <laughs> so I could just copy. Um... I'm going to say A Realm Reborn. Anthony's going with A and then Mark. Oh. I'm going to say A for Anthony's answer. <laughs> yeah. So the correct answer <laughs> is A, A Realm Reborn. Because that was a patch yeah. update. Yeah. Name yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like the patch update that made it like 2.0. Yeah, I was curious if I, if I would be able to like get somebody with that. But... <laughs> 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 right. I was trying to I was trying to remember because I know it came out before that and then they scrapped it. I'm like, what did they label it as? Was it I couldn't remember? So I, and I'm like, and then Stormblood, I'm like, I know it's Storm something, but I'm like, did he change the word? Maybe it's Storm like something else, like Stormborn or something. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> uh, I took a bit of a gamble and paid off. All right. And my final question that I'm really annoyed John isn't here for is this. <laughs> Which song was not featured in Disney Extreme Skateboarding? Is it <laughs> A, Pacific Coast Party by Smash Mouth, B, I'm Just a Kid by Simple Plan, C, Get a Clue by Prozac, or D, Sell Out by Real Big Fish? Sean. Um, B, Simple Plan. Okay, Sean is going with B. Anthony. We'll go simple plan as well. Yeah, and Mark. C. Get a clue by Prozac? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the correct answer is B, because the song featured by Simple Plan was actually Grow Up. So I'm Just a Kid was not in the game. <laughs> John needs to grow up. <laughs> All right, final He's score. Anthony five, Sean and Mark both got three. And that's it. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. What do I win? <laughs> uh, one night alone with John. That's what you get. Deal. <laughs> well, I'm glad I win, then. I've had plenty of those. <laughs> you, you win John's new PSVR. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be over in an hour. Too bad this is golf rules, so low score wins. <laughs> All right. This has been another successful episode of the Guy Pie Podcast. I'm Chris. That's Sean. I'm Sean. Mark. I'm <laughs> And the champion for this week's episode, Anthony. I'm Chris. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then I will be recording an awful dub to fix the voiceover recording at the start. <laughs> so <Here we> go. <laughs> you'll get for anyone who does listen that they'll get the full context at the end of why the fuck that happened. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and that's the way.